Hi, this is Sean D'Souza, and you're listening to the Three Month Vacation Podcast. This podcast isn't some magic trick about how to work less. Instead, it's about how to really enjoy the work that you do and to enjoy your vacation time. Hi, it's Sean, and you're listening to the Three Month Vacation. Back when I was in university, my friend Shelley Brown sent me a recording of a rap band. It was called Run DMC. Now, I listened to the music very patiently, and then I decided rap has no future. As you can see, I'm a lot worse than most people at predicting the future. Even back in 2008, I had friends in the industry who were talking about mobile as being the next big thing, but there we were in the middle of 2015 with no intention of creating a mobile-friendly site. I figured mobile had no future. Why bother with a new website when the existing website was doing just fine? However, what prompted me into action was a little chat with a client. The client was into search engine optimization, and he suggested that it would be a good idea to create a new website as well. While we designed all of the earlier sites, I was clearly out of depth when it came to mobile, which is why I left the entire task of the design to that client. The design that he produced was so horrific, so hard to describe, that there was no choice but to abandon the project. However, by then, there had been a bit of a side effect, and we had been bitten by the redesign bug. And so on the 27th of July in 2015, the first website sketch was done. It would take another three years and ten days before the website went live. This is the story of the Psychotactics website. And, you know, we do all of this marketing stuff and sometimes philosophy and sometimes, I don't know, just a little rant here and there. But from time to time, we also tell you stories or rather the backstory, like the backstory of how we got to New Zealand, the backstory of, of so many things. And, and now this is about the website. This is this website that never seemed to be making any progress. It was always progressing, but it never seemed to reach a finish line. And so this is the story, and we're going back in time. When we started out the website, it was like, let's go on this journey. It wasn't a specific, okay, here's a deadline, let's go with this journey and make it to this deadline. We just started designing all the layouts and stuff like that, and then we ran into a whole bunch of barriers. And the first barrier was the headline course. That started in August of 2015. Now, a headline course is not like the article writing course. The article writing course just generates a thousand posts a week but it still requires a lot of being there for the client at all times. But I thought the course will end in eight weeks like it normally does, and then we'll have most of November and then December. And I got an unexpected invitation to go to Nashville. There is a best-selling author in Nashville, and he was having this series of workshops and he said why don't you come and I thought okay why don't we go and then you think well let's kill two birds with one stone there's no point in just showing up there let's do a workshop of our own let's do a topic like storytelling now this meant that notes needed to be written slides had to be created zillions of cartoons needed to be drawn and 
Yes, the website went into the first session of Deep Freeze as we were conducting the workshops in Nashville, and then we went to Amsterdam, and there we were right in 2016. In 2016, okay, brand new year, we've got a new resolution, let's get the website going. However, remember how I was included into mobile? It had been over six months, and I was still working out how mobile designs work differently from earlier websites, which meant that the very pretty looking Photoshop designs looked gorgeous in the program, but they looked terrible on the website itself. And then there was also the going away, the moving away from the earlier website. We were in love with our earlier website. We liked the sidebars. We wanted them on the new website as well. And when we put it all there, it became a mess because on the new website, it goes all the way to the bottom. And it was looking terrible, which meant that we were spending an inordinate amount of time just going around in circles. But right at that point, we ran into what could be considered the biggest hurdle of 2016. As you're probably aware, we tend to treat our courses like software. So it goes from version 1 to version 1.1, 1.2, and then we'll do a major upgrade at some point. And this is even if a course or a product is selling really well. One of the products that really needed work, or rather one of the courses, is the article writing course. And we had version 1, and we had to move to version 2.0. In theory, this rewrite shouldn't have been a problem. I'm pretty adept at writing, as well as creating course material, but there is also this factor of laziness. If I can procrastinate, I will, and the only way I'm going to get anything done is to announce that we are rolling out a new version. In this case, I announced we're rolling out version 2.0. And we pre-sold it, obviously, we pre-sold it to both home study and to the live course people, the people that were going to do it online. And the challenge was to write the course material while the course was still in progress. Our normal behavior is to send course material at least a month in advance. And clients got version one of the article writing course. They got the audio, they got the notes. And while they were working their way through the new course, I started moving everything around. And by everything, I literally mean everything. Assignments that were in week eight were moved to week three. Whole sections of the course were just thrown away or chipped away. And it was a complete rework of everything. When you think of something like assignments for a course, it doesn't sound like a lot, but every assignment takes over three hours to write, simply because it has complete step-by-step -step instructions, it has detailed examples, it has frequently asked questions. It's very complete. And then on top of all that workload, there was the re-recording of the audio series. So you have the text, and then you have the audio, and then you have the assignments, and then all of this is happening while the course is in progress. To say that I was fried after all of this activity is putting in mildly. I remember a whole week of headaches. A wake up in the morning headache, afternoon headache, evening headache. And this went on for a complete week. My sleep wasn't good either. And my head felt like Neil Armstrong could take a walk on it. When it was finished in July, we took a break, one of our vacations, and we flew to India. And my blood pressure was up, my cholesterol was up, and to even talk or think about websites was not an option at all. Yet that's exactly what we had to do when we got back from the break. And the website might have been ready. It might have been ready to go by the end of 2016, but we had to very painful technical problems. One of those problems was our broadband connection. If 
you drive around parts of Auckland, you're likely to see signs that say, fiber connection coming in 2019. And back in 2016, if there was one thing that I wanted more than anything else, it was that fiber connection. When we first moved to this house and to this office many years ago, we were one of the first people to have broadband and everyone had dial-up. And broadband was super fast, as you know, but then everybody started getting broadband. So if you went online, you'd see all of these connections, like 15, 20 connections all around us. And what this meant was that our connection got slower and slower and slower and it was really frustrating. It sounds funny now, but it, it was really, really frustrating. At one point, it would take me, I don't know, six or eight minutes just to upload a few megabytes of data. And just as a matter of comparison, in order to upload this podcast, I used to go to the cafe down the road and stand outside the cafe after hours, because that's when I finished recording, and it would take between 12 to 15 minutes to upload it. But if I tried to upload that podcast from the office, it would take 12 to 16 hours. And so we had this broadband connection, and it wasn't until August 2017 that we got a fiber connection. And suddenly, we were 500% faster. We could actually get around to working on the website. Now, that didn't mean that our work process dramatically improved because some of the technical difficulties that we had was we had hosted the sandbox, which is, you know, the website in progress. So we hosted it on a server somewhere. That server was so slow that it took ages to view any pages, to get any of the pages updated. And when it's a single problem that you're dealing with, it doesn't seem more than much of a bother. But I don't know what it was about it, but it seemed like all of these problems were cumulative. The software, the internet connection, the server, they all kind of piled on each other to create a perfect headache. Still, when you're faced with barriers, what are you going to do? There is no way but to go forward. By August 2017, we had our modem. We did our little modem dance. And then we got on with the job of completing the website. It was late in the year. We were exhausted. And even as you're doing all of this stuff there are other things that are going on all the time. So for instance, at this point in time, the membership site at 5000 BC had been upgraded. So that took some of the attention away. I had a speaking engagement. I speak at We Are Podcast in Australia. I had to get all the slides together, go to Australia, come back. There was all of this back and forth. And we decided, okay, let's take a little time off in Byron Bay in Australia. And then before I know it, it's October, and then November, and then December. And now it's time for another New Year's resolution. It's in 2017 when things really got going. However, we had all of this start, stop, start, stop for so long that any progress was frustrating. At times, I just wanted to give up, but... How do you give up? There's no going back. You still have to finish the website. So we had to go forward. And as late as August 2017, I have this note in my diary going grumbling about how things are not going my way. And it's clear that despite everything, I'm still in struggle mode. Part of the problem was my own doing. I didn't want the website to be a rehash of the earlier one. If we were going to create a new website, we needed a new look, and this included dozens of cartoons. But luck does play a role from time to time. Without putting much thought into it, I bought an iPad Pro in 2017. Now, I had owned iPads before, and they were mostly glorified book readers. 
But this one was different. This iPad I could draw on with an Apple Pencil. And the Apple Pencil is just amazing. It's like a normal pencil. It feels like a normal pencil. It works like a normal pencil. And then there was this wonderful program called Procreate, which is, I don't know, about $15. It should be $1,500 if you ask me, but it's $15. And so you take the iPad, you take the pencil, and you have me lying around on the sofa, at cafes, all over the place, drawing cartoons. I was drawing dozens of cartoons all over the place, all the time. Before the iPad Pro, I was chained to my computer. I was chained to Photoshop. But once I got the iPad Pro, I could go anywhere and draw. That was the difference. That was a very critical component for the new website, for the new look, to have all of those fresh cartoons with a style that represented where we were in 2017. Not some cartoons from 2012 and 2010, all those years. And I know it kind of doesn't make any difference to the person that goes to the website because they don't know where the cartoons come from and what age they go. But to me, that was different. For me, that was very important. And drawing on the iPad at a furious pace, and now we had literally 100, 200 new cartoons. As I record this podcast, it's early September. If you were to ask me what was the most challenging part of the website, I could say it was the broadband, it was the server, it was the software, lots of little things. What took me by surprise, however, was the testimonials. Of all the elements on the website, the testimonials took the most time to put together. A single testimonial, because of how the layout was positioned, would take four different steps. So you had to do name in one place, photo in another place, something else in the third place. So everything was like four steps. One testimonial, four steps. Two testimonials, eight steps. And we have literally hundreds of testimonials. And it doesn't stop there because there was also the size of the photograph. So with the testimonial, we always put photographs because it's clear that, you know, Clients recognize the kind of people that we attract and people look at photographs and they see themselves as a mirror. So photographs are very important. The problem was that the previous website, we had very tiny photographs because we didn't need big photographs back then. And some of them were as small as 8 KB. That wouldn't do for the new site. And that's where my great Facebook and LinkedIn scavenger hunt began. I'd look for the clients first on Facebook. Then if I couldn't find them, I'd go to LinkedIn. And some of the testimonials go back in time. So clients have kind of changed over the years. Some of them have, no, all of them have aged. And so they've updated their photographs. Well, that was good for them that they'd updated their photographs. They'd updated the sizes. They were better photographs. But I couldn't tell if they were the same people. So I had to read through the bios, go in and check, you know, are these the same people? Just to make sure that I wasn't putting the wrong photo alongside the name. And that was it. We got to August of 2018. And the only reason why the website got completed in 2018 was because there was no choice. We work for about 12 weeks, then we take a break. This means that any sort of project which is ongoing, like the website, it goes on hold every time you take a break. And then we come back and then you have to recover. And so it, everything else seems to take priority but the website. And I did a little calculation in my head and I thought, if we postpone this past August, it will never get done in 2018. This is because the article writing course started in August, and that is extremely demanding. It's one of the few times where I struggle to keep up with my email because that generates so many posts in a day. And after the course, I knew that I had a speaking engagement in Australia, then we we're going to Mexico for a vacation. And 
this meant that the website was going to be postponed all the way into 2019. So we had now, for the first time, a fixed date. It had to be launched before August rolled out. But all of this activity got us very, very tired. I was so exhausted, Renuka was exhausted. We decided to take a trip to Fiji. We took a week off, even though the website was ready to go. And the website developers, Audrey and Mangesh from stresslessweb.com, they were keen to get going in late July, but Renuka was adamant. She was like, no, we're going to take the break first. We're going to go to wherever first. And we were walking past the, the, the travel agent. We always booked through the travel agent. And she, she marched me and she sat me down and she told the travel agent, you're going to book these tickets. And so that meant that we had to wait for another 10 days, but it was a good move. In Fiji, we did almost nothing, no swimming, no snorkeling, zero activity. It wasn't so much a vacation as a change of scene. So we just had breakfast, we could come back to the room, check the email, fall asleep. And this was it, eat, drink, sleep, eat, drink, sleep. And then we got back to Auckland and it was time to launch the website. The developers told us to go through a sanity check. They said they'll keep the website in limbo for a while. Renuka wasn't in any mood to go through hundreds of pages or even through the most important pages. She decided if things didn't work, then we'd fix it later. And at 11.17 a.m., 7th August, the website was live. Three years and about a month, that's what it took. And that's just version one of this new website. I'm still working on the pages. I want to do a whole bunch of things, but first I'm going to need another vacation. I've made notes of those changes and by next year we'll start rolling out those changes. And now that the website is live, I just want to thank the dozens of volunteers from 5000 BC. So we asked for volunteers and people went through individual pages, wrote what they liked, what they didn't like, what changes they wanted. And to this day, almost a month later, I think, we have been making changes, font changes, graphic changes, lots of little, little changes and some important changes as well. And Renuka's inbox is flooded with suggestions. So I want to thank members of 5000 BC and I also want to thank stresslessweb.com and no, this is not going to be an Oscar speech. So we're just grateful to everyone who has pitched in. And if you're listening and you would like to volunteer, go to the website and pick a page, any page. And yes, send us your input, what you like, what you don't like. And finally, what ideas or suggestions you have. And if you want to do more than one page, be our guest. Thank you again for listening to this podcast, and we'll speak to you soon. Bye for now. Still listening? One of the things that usually comes with launching a website is this advice that you get from, I don't know, folks that seem to be well-meaning, but they seem to slow you down. When we launched our first psychotactics website around 2002, there were people that kept telling me that psychotactics was a bad name, that we wouldn't succeed with that kind of name. And even now, I had what I would call a friend, and that person was very adamant that we should keep our old website. Now, that person has a whole bunch of websites, and they're all mobile-friendly, and they're all, you know, modern websites. And I couldn't figure out why. I couldn't figure out why he was suggesting that we keep our old website. And it almost gave me some pause. Like, what if we launched this website, and then suddenly we lost all our traffic? Or what if we launched this website, and suddenly we weren't selling in the same amount of product or whatever. And, you know, you have to make these decisions. You can't 
necessarily depend on somebody else's voice. You have to listen to your own voice inside based on your experience and sometimes just nothing at all, just because you have to do it. And that's what we did. And of course, we have sold from that day on. The number of subscribers hasn't gone down at all. And the first sale that we did after the website was launched got exactly the numbers that we got before the website was brand new. So there you go. That's a little twist in the tail, I would say. That's me, Sean. This is the thing back for now. And we will see you in 5000 BC. Bye-bye.